Professor Pierre Bat. Okay, so Professor Pierre Bateau from Au Marseille University will be giving us a presentation, a very important pre presentation with a historical flavor of the evolution of management research until today. Um, thank you so much, Pierre, for this presentation. We look very much forward. If you have any questions, please uh, place the question on the chat and we will be uh, reviewing the questions and passing them to Pierre at the end or you can raise your hand. The function is available to you if you go to the participants button at the bottom of your screen. If you go there, then you will see a function called raise hand. Actually, Nina is not available right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I can't see this anymore for some reason. Uh, you, you are in the participants. Mm -hmm. It should be when you go to the very end of the list of participants. Uh, uh, yeah. Can, can others see? I, I don't see it on my screen. I saw it before when we were speaking, the two of us. It's under the reactions tab. Yeah, or you can under the yeah. reaction tab. do the reaction tab. OK, okay. This, this comes and goes. This is yeah. the difference. Okay. And you can't tell the priority. Usually is in the participants. Yeah, but you know, it, see put the chat if you want to read your question you can read it or i can do it for you all right thank you so much over to pierre okay so thank you very much i see that right uh so as i told you um hans uh, was due to make this presentation uh so in lieu of hands, I'm going to, tr to try to, to, to do it uh, quickly. So there is a sort of uh, some time improvisation. And I had to sort out in several uh, old uh, slides to compose uh, something very quickly. Uh, I want first uh, to make a brief flashback on management education and research during the 20th century. And to talk about this effort which took place as of uh, the end of World War II to discipline uh, and to organize management as a, a science, an academic uh, uh, discipline uh, and a science. And uh, there are three reports that have been important uh, for that. I just remind them. You can find on the internet plenty of information about that. So uh, you just have the, the name. If you want to go to, to know more, you can uh, uh, key in this kind of uh, information and then you'll get uh, the um, uh, Rowan Gaither uh, report uh, of the Ford Foundation, the Pearson Research, and mainly the Gordon Orwell report uh, of the Ford Foundation, 1959. In this report, there was a harsh criticism of how the business schools were organized uh, in America. Now, the most business schools, they were born at the turn of the century, and uh, they were uh, thriving on, the, of course, the industrial revolutions and uh, the, the development of uh, uh, American industry in the end of their World War I and so on. And uh, these schools, they were uh, uh, teaching, uh, you know, uh, in a way which was not really academic, that was uh, simply a uh, transmission of experience from uh, uh, senior people, that was uh, apprenticeship, apprenticeship and several means. And there was, uh, you know, this criticism that uh, uh, the uh, teaching and education of religion were not enough scientific. In Europe, uh, a little bit later, those reports uh, have uh, percolated in some sort. And uh, there has been several reactions, of course, depending on whether these were universities and business schools. In uh, Europe, uh, at the, in the 60s and the 70s, a certain number of new institutions were born and uh, adding to the old one, for instance, in Spain, institutions like IESE 
or like a SAD, were old institutions. Uh, and but also where newer indication in SEAD, for instance, was uh, started in uh, uh, 61 or 90, I don't remember exactly, but roughly uh, this date. And those institutions, uh, they uh, started to be organized in a way which was more uh, conform, more in adequation with the recommendation of the governor well report and so on. But uh, in universities, that was different. You know, in Europe, in America, all the great business schools, they were within large universities. And there was a strong correlation in general uh, between the ranking of the university and the ranking of a business school. You know, Harvard Business School was at the top with Harvard University and so on. So the business schools were inside the university, which means that they were in close contact with other disciplines and with the academic organization of knowledge, the academic organization of research. It was not exactly the case uh, in Europe because in the universities, uh, you know, they, uh, they, they were not uh, starting uh, management education and research before a while. And some of them, they were reluctant to do that. They were reluctant because they were not private university. They were most of them public university receiving their uh, funds from uh, the government or from uh, public sources. And, uh, you know, adding a new discipline like management uh, or business school and so on, that was to share, to share the funds. And they didn't like uh, that. So for, for many reasons, uh, the great business schools in Europe, they started outside the university. And when they were inside the universities like the London Business School in, uh, in, uh, in London, they were uh, very loosely tied up to the university. They were very autonomous. They are their own funding, their own organization and so on. So for this reason, the uh, uh, academic standards that the universities were able to uh, propose to the business school organization, they were uh, more uh, quickly uh, uh, instilled in the business school in the US than in Europe. Hmm? Uh, so you have this, uh, this report, I've just mentioned the, the, uh, the links if you want to, uh, uh, to go there. Before that, you know, management thinking uh, was uh, provided by a certain number of people. I have just mentioned here some of them and here the, the picture. These are, you know, the great names. When you learn management, of course, all those names should be, uh, I would say, more or less familiar to all of you because you have heard of them. Uh, most of them are not, uh, no longer alive. Uh, you can see in, in this that there is only a single uh, human, so that's not very inclusive, uh, you know, before World War II and after World War II. Uh, we have to, to, to wait until now. Our seminar is very inclusive. How many uh, women? I have not counted the proportion, but uh, we are now in a, in, a, in a much better situation. But you have these old pe people and you have all here at least, uh, they are not all there, but uh, many uh, have been here. So all those people, they have uh, forged the uh, management thinking in a, a more academic way. Some of them, they were in academic department. Chris Algeris, for instance, was in the psychological department at Harvard uh, here. Michel Crozet was a French uh, sociologist. Uh, uh, people like the Maggio and so on. Henry Misbert was McGill University, so he was also an academic. Andrew Pettigrew and so on. All those people were academics and little by little they have shaped, you know, the uh, way our uh, management departments are uh, organized. Mm -hmm. European, uh, European doctoral education now, uh, research. In uh, the US, you know, in the top business schools department, they have 
they were uh, in the 60s and the, and the early 70s, they were highly research oriented. They were already espousing the standards of the other university departments in natural life sciences. Now, they were uh, myself, I said uh, that I uh, did my PhD at Kellogg University. At Kellogg University, the departments uh, were structured exactly like laboratories in physics or in, uh, in chemistry or in uh, life sciences or in medical sciences. And the, uh, the, 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 the doctoral programs were already there. There were workshops, there were exchange of uh, presentations by researchers and so on. Everything was exactly like uh, the rest of the university. It was not exactly the case uh, so in uh, Europe because uh, the, the, the structuration started in the early 70s. Doctoral management start to spread in, 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 in several countries. Uh, so we'll have the opportunity in the second part of this uh, presentation to leave uh, you know, the speech to all of them to tell a little bit about your own environment and the history of your own environment. How do you uh, know about that? Uh, uh, what is the prison status compared to what uh, had been the, the, the previous one? Of course, uh, you know, when I am talking of a time, the 70s, where we were still uh, in the Cold War period. And in the Cold War period, uh, we didn't know very much about what was going on in uh, countries on the uh, other side of the, uh, uh, of the European continent, you know. Although uh, in the uh, 70s, in the late 60s and the early 70s, there was in Vienna, in Austria, uh, a sort of a management institution oriented toward the system analysis and management of uh, big systems in which they had uh, managed to uh, have a permanent dialogue and the presence of researchers from Russia and different uh, Soviet uh, Union countries and uh, European countries and American countries. So that was an experience which uh, uh, had a lot, a lot of uh, new developments in Europe uh, about uh, management research. But in Europe, most doctoral programs started uh, at this moment. In France, for instance, the first doctoral program we had in management uh, started in Aix-en-Provence, in, uh, in my city, uh, in my university, in uh, 72, uh, end of 72. Uh, uh, in uh, HEC, for instance, uh, it started a little bit later in 8081. Uh, in uh, INSEAD, it was later in the 80s, in the early uh, 80s. So, uh, you know, everything started in Europe after that, whereas in America, it was already organized. So for this reason, uh, for, for this reason, uh, to train people in management, to train instructors, educators, and teachers, we had to rely on American uh, experience. And this is why in Europe, everywhere, foundations and uh, funding uh, uh, institutions they sent with uh, university, they sent people abroad in America to study and to get PhDs there. This is why I've got the PhD there. The French Foundation had organized a, a big program. And most of the uh, professors in management at INSEAD, at HEC, uh, at uh, Dauphin, University Dauphin, or in some of the uh, other uh, top business schools, they were trained in America. Uh, uh, in PhDs or uh, other programs there. And they started to develop, you know, to import uh, those ideas. That was a little bit the same in, uh, in other countries, but John maybe could uh, tell us uh, later some about uh, what uh, went on in uh, uh, Nordic countries. You can uh, also, if you have information, uh, remind what happened in the uh, uh, south, uh, Southern Europe countries, okay? 
The idea, of course, was that management was an applied science. Of course, we had to organize it as a science, but applied, drawing on established discipline. The idea was to solve management problems coming from the real world, but drawing on mathematics, statistics, psychology, and so on, and all those disciplines. At the beginning, of course, math and stats were heavily, and quantitative and economics were heavily relied on. For a reason is that in America, at the end of World War II, uh, there uh, had been a, a huge effort of the country to solve logistic problem linked to the war. And they had relied on mathematicians, they had relied on physicists, they had relied on the scientists, uh, uh, some of them coming from Eastern Europe, some of them coming from Europe, uh, and uh, all those people, they have developed a discipline which was called operation research and which was heavily mathematic and, this, and statistic. And this has influenced strongly uh, the organization, the early organization of business schools uh, in Europe. And even in Edinburgh, the beginning, I'll talk about the Edinburgh history uh, just in a few minutes, but in Edinburgh history, uh, in the first Edinburgh uh, presentation, I would say that after half of the presentations of dissertations, they were strongly quantitative oriented rather than qualitative oriented, because it was in the in the aftermath, in the wake, you know, of uh, this organization of uh, management science here. In the early 60s, uh, by a sort of uh, imitation of the American situation, you know, that's Powell and De Major. Uh, theory uh, the, were created associations in uh, uh, Europe, for instance, European Accounting Association, uh, Association for Industrial Economics, European Finance Association, uh, of course, uh, molded on the uh, American Finance Association, the International Business Strategy, the Marketing Academy, and so on. Uh, Euroma and all those institutions, and all those associations, they were created between uh, 70 and uh, 73, you know, in, in the three years. At the same time as EFMD, I'll talk about EFMD, the European Foundation, which is today uh, managing the EQUIS uh, uh, and, and the EPAS uh, uh, labels. Hmm? So uh, everything started uh, at this period. All these associations today are managed uh, in the framework of the European uh, uh, EAESM, European Institute of Advanced Studies in Management, uh, where Nina is uh, uh, working and operating. And in particular, Nina is taking care of uh, often of the workshop or associations uh, meeting uh, of those. Hmm? And a little bit later, Edinburgh was created, and Euram. Euram came later as an institution which was more inclusive than these ones which were highly specialized in their uh, discipline. Uh, a little bit about Edinburgh history. Uh, you know, the, 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 I have a personal story of the uh, beginning of Edinburgh. And hence, uh, as a complementary story. So, for, unfortunately, uh, we have not yet written uh, this in a form uh, which is, uh, uh, you know, unified. But uh, during the summer uh, 1990, there was in Aix-en-Provence, in my university, a program which uh, was called, which is still called, the International Teachers Program. This program was a former Harvard Business School program. Uh, and in this program, when it was at Harvard, a lot of French professors, uh, Danish professors, Swedish professors, uh, uh, UK professors, and, and Italians and had been participating in this program. And they had come uh, back with you know, a, a training in the case method. That was a program for, ha for Harvard to uh, uh, you know, spread the gospel. The gospel was the case method. 
And all those people, they had been trained in the case method, and they were in some sort the founders of many MBA programs and uh, uh, programs of these sorts in the, uh, the European business schools. This program, ITP, was stopped by Harvard in uh, uh, 69, I think, uh, this day. And in order to uh, prolong the, the work of Harvard, we decided to have this program in Europe. And we started it in a different form, a summer, uh, sort of summer academy and so on. And this program was in aix en provence in 1990. And during one of the uh, session, uh, one of the dinner you know, in Provence, uh, in the, uh, the hot the summer of Provence uh, dinner at night, uh, that, there was a guy named Tony Berry. Tony Berry was at Manchester University. He was the director of uh, uh, the Ambrion, the first doctoral program in Manchester Business School. And he told us that uh, maybe it was time to unify uh, management uh, educa doctoral education at the European level and started the, the idea that we should uh, make something in that. And he said, I am going to write to a certain number of people in Europe and uh, to invite them in a meeting for uh, thinking about that. And this uh, uh, meeting took place in uh, Christmas, Christmas uh, 90, uh, 90, Christmas 90. Uh, in Manchester, invited uh, colleagues in Manchester. Hans uh, uh, Sigart was there and a certain number of other people uh, that I don't detail uh, that. And we decided uh, to uh, create this association, to start this association. Uh, and uh, we decided to have the first meeting in Stockholm, in Sweden, in June 91. So this is why it's the 30th anniversary. It was 91. And we had this uh, uh, meeting uh, with about uh, 60 participants. Uh, of course, at the time, we had more participants from uh, Western Europe than Eastern Europe. But after a while, uh, we uh, balanced more uh, the participation of uh, both sides uh, of uh, Europe. So, uh, and we have known three decades of activity. Uh, we'll, uh, if you have questions about this, we'll uh, be able to, uh, to answer, but I don't want to, to spend most, too, too, too much time on the, the history. And we decided to uh, have several types of activity. First, a general annual meeting. At first, the general meeting, uh, meeting was a meeting of the directors of doctoral programs, only directors of doctoral programs. And most of them were coming from uh, schools, business schools, uh, INSEAD, uh, ESAD, IES in Barcelona, London Business School, uh, 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 HEC, uh, and uh, um, Stockholm School of Economics and so on. Uh, and little by little, uh, we had we added universities, university. And the, the reason of this lag is simply, as I told you, because universities were, you know, uh, laggards in some sort in developing uh, management uh, educa doctoral education. In general, another reason in many universities, you know, management was under the umbrella of the economic department and the economic people, they didn't want really to share and to lose uh, their management side. And they were retaining management as a sort of uh, uh, daughter discipline of economics. Uh, so if you were uh, an economist, you have the right to talk about management. If you were not, you know, you were outside. So there was this uh, reluctancy of uh, universities to uh, enter into management doctoral education. But after a while, it changed totally uh, in the, the end of the 90s and the early 20s. And now we are in a totally different situation. So we started with general meetings every year. We created the first summer academy in, uh, as far as I remember, 1992 or 93, I don't remember, in Lovin. We were in Lovin, uh, in, Lovin uh, uh, in Belgium. 
uh, not Louvain. Uh, Louvain is the French side, and Louvain uh, is the uh, Flemish side. So we had during uh, three or four years the, the academy there. And then we moved to uh, another place in France, the Chateau de Bonas of uh, uh, good recollection for many uh, of uh, the old Edinburgh participants. It was a castle in the southwest of France. And uh, we spent uh, uh, maybe 10 academies in this castle. And after the castle, we moved to another a nice place, which was an old abbey, the Abbey of Sorais, in which, uh, uh, you know, the training of uh, uh, top people uh, in the army uh, after uh, uh, the French Revolution had been made. And uh, that was a place uh, which was uh, very nice for the environment and so on. And we have also eight or nine uh, academy there. And after that, of course, we moved to Athens. Athens, that was the place, the dream, the place, of course, for doing that, you know, not very far from uh, the uh, Plateau Academy place. Mm. Uh, so uh, uh, this was the second type of activity. And then we, we created a supervision uh, workshop uh, jointly with the European Institute, EIESM, and this was held in Barcelona for several years. It's still working. We, we, we couldn't do it in 2020. And this year, we hope to have it next year again. And so this was. And the governance of the institution, maybe some here could tell more about how Edemba is organized today. Uh, with the, the, the executive committee. I'm no longer in the ex executive committee. I've been chairman of EDEMBA uh, after uh, Edward Bonnet and after uh, Hans uh, uh, Sigart. Uh, but uh, today I am no longer in the, in the, in the committee. And then I uh, leave uh, those persons there to tell more about that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, Management education and its organization today and the, and the research. Of course, as I, as I said, there were important drivers of this organization. And within university, little by little, doctoral education has been aligned on the academic standards of dominant disciplines. Uh, at least in all those I have visited, you know, I, I had the opportunity to uh, evaluate several institutions in France or abroad and to look at how uh, uh, doctoral education is organized. We, we have last year uh, published a book with uh, some colleagues about the organization of a supervision in 40 uh, different countries. And little by little, the doctorate, the doctorate has been aligned on the academic standards of disciplines which are the major ones. The one, you know, that are dominant in the Senate of the university, in the scientific council of the university and so on. Uh, which are dominant? It depends on the university. But if you are in big, uh, in large, uh, uh, universal uh, domain university, then of course, the dominant disciplines are those in which there is a Nobel Prize, typically. Uh, if you are in a discipline with a Nobel Prize, then you are at the top of the hierarchy. This is why the economists have uh, really fought in the, in the 70s, in the early 70s, to have their Nobel Prize. So they have called that the Nobel Prize. It's not really a Nobel Prize. It's in the memory of Alfred Nobel, but uh, it's called a Nobel Prize for this reason. Uh, economics has become, in some disciplines, a dominant uh, discipline. And they, uh, they define the, uh, the standards, you know, so you have to align on those standards in most universities. But you will tell me whether it's the case in your uh, own environment. Within independent schools, 
the drivers and not being the rest of the university because they are separated from the rest of the university. So uh, the drivers have been mainly the competition for the labels. You know? Once you start competing with Equis, ACCSB, EMBA, and uh, all the national accreditation systems, which are done for all the, the disciplines, immediately you uh, fall into uh, the, the, the trap of, uh, you know, uh, showing what you are doing in research and showing that you are well aligned on what is uh, uh, regular in the dominant disciplines precisely. So uh, in the independent schools, the organization has been uh, driven uh, by uh, the labels mainly. Also a little bit in the university, but much less in the university in general. I remember that when Equis uh, uh, teams visited my own institution in the university, they were really interested in the, uh, the school itself and the organization of the school, whereas our uh, speech was mainly to tell them that we were, uh, you know, uh, on the, the good and we all stand out university that make the Shanghai ranking. Uh, but they didn't care about that. That was not the Shanghai ranking. That was the equis that uh, was in, of interest for us. So uh, we had this uh, 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 conundrum, you know, of uh, the... Uh, uh, labels on the one side and the organization of uh, the universities as it is in many countries. You'll tell me whether you have that. Doctoral programs. The organization today of the doctoral programs has strongly changed probably in most of your, 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 your places over the last uh, uh, 40 years. Uh, you have the school or the university. In some cases, there's, can you see my, uh, my arrow? Uh, uh, no, you don't see. So I, I need to take an instrument to, uh, you don't see my arrow uh, circling around. No, so sorry. If you don't see it, uh, I don't know where I can find the tool for, uh, uh, doing that. I think that they can do it. I think that they can do it if I go back. Uh, let's see. Uh, just a second. Okay. So it doesn't matter. Let, let us, uh, we'll uh, look at that later. You have the school and the university. In some cases, the school is totally independent of uh, any university. It means that it's totally centered on management or closely related fields. If you are within the university, of course, you have all the other departments and you have to follow more or less the organization of the rest of the university. Uh, whether you are in schools of university, you have departments. Uh, departments, uh, in most cases in schools, they have been organized for teaching. At first, and this afternoon, uh, I'll have the opportunity to talk about, about disciplines in management, how uh, they exist and who uh, they are and how our departments organized. And this has a, a strong influence on, on the research, of course. Uh, and it goes back very old in the time, we'll see that. Departments, uh, departments, they were done, they were uh, designed at first, uh, the architecture or design for, research, for uh, teaching. And little by little, they became at the same time research units. But today, in many cases, departments and research units are separated more or less strongly. In some cases, they are totally separated. In France, for instance, in which after World War II, uh, the government didn't trust the universities for doing good research. The universities were places where people were too often talking about the sex of the angels. So uh, we had to reconstruct the country after World War II. Uh, you needed serious people. And in France, we have the Grandes Ecoles, in which you have engineers, trained uh, administrators, managers, public managers, and so on. 
and these are the serious people. So uh, instead of uh, giving the university uh, the role to uh, do research, it was granted to another institution, the CNRS, the National Center for uh, Research. And this uh, center had independent research units totally uh, separated from the university. Fortunately, today, a joint uh, movement has been made so that most of those units they are, as we say, mixed with the university. It means that they are still with their own staff, uh, researchers, which are not university people, but uh, and they are devoted, totally dedicated to research. They can supervise doctorate, but they do only research, not teaching. And on the other side, you have teachers and researchers and they are in those units. So most universities are organized like that. And I presume that in other countries in which there is not this separation between research and teaching, uh, you still have, you have research units which are uh, uh, independent of teaching departments. Hmm? A lot of research units. And after that, you have the doctoral programs. The doctoral programs at first, they were uh, born, as I said, in uh, schools, in Europe at least, in America too, in schools, of course. Uh, and they were uh, not necessarily linked to research units. For instance, at ESSEC, the redoctoral program was not considered as a research program. It was a, a teaching program in some sort, educational program at ESSEC, the French uh, business school. So there were doctoral programs, you know, uh, being uh, in between. Today, most doctoral programs in universities, they are more or less uh, considered as uh, 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 doctoral schools. In some cases, even, you know, doctoral schools are bigger entities which group several doctoral programs from several departments of the university or several uh, uh, schools and sometimes above all you have a doctoral collision uh, in my university for instance there is a doctoral collision grouping 12 doctoral schools and 12 doctoral schools grouping maybe a hundred of doctoral programs with 5,000 doctoral students uh, currently uh, in progress so it's really a big uh, institutions so maybe you'll have the opportunity to tell us whether in your own environment, uh, this is the case or not, and in which environment. We, you know, what we want to know is what's the situation today? And you are the actors of the situation. So you have to tell us uh, what's the situation in your uh, particular. So uh, very briefly, uh, let me uh, say that I want to, uh, yes, to leave 45 minutes for the, for the discussion. So uh, uh, when we organize doctoral today, doctoral is organized in uh, different uh, uh, modes. Uh, it can be in three years, only uh, centered on the uh, doctoral uh, production, as it is the case in France. The doctoral programs today in France are uh, totally according to the standards of the university. It's not the standard that we would have liked to uh, have, but they have been imposed by the rest of, of the university. Three years uh, uh, centered on the doctorate, and before uh, one or two years uh, of preparation, and it's called, in our case, a master, research master. But you, you'll tell us whether it's the case for you. So you have this organization, and you have several steps. You know them very well since you are uh, in this progress. And uh, uh, this is the, the, the typical organization. So what I want to do uh, in the last uh, 45 minutes, you know, to know more about what's going on to do. Uh, and to share about that. Uh, I would like you uh, to explain your status as doctoral students. First, uh, PhD or DBA this morning, uh, Dimitris has mentioned uh, the fact that uh, we have included DBA, of course, 
you know, in some countries, the distinction is not made. In, uh, in UK, they have preferred to make this distinction, and maybe it's a good thing. I thought that in France, they should have also thought about uh, this. Uh, DBA at the beginning is an invention of Harvard. Harvard, the business school didn't want to have a, uh, at, the, at the beginning a PhD. They wanted to have a DBA uh, to mention the fact that uh, they were to train people that were solving uh, problems within companies and organization, not uh, uh, academic problems. So this is the origin of the word uh, DBA. So, uh, but uh, as uh, Dimitri told you, the first, uh, I think, uh, two or three prizes, uh, dissertation in number prizes, were granted to uh, DBA. So you see, we, we don't see really much differences in the, in, in the kind of DBAs that we have accepted within the network. Mm -hmm. uh, so which institution are you? Are you in an independent school? What's the link of your school with the university? Uh, are you working mainly with uh, people in management or if people also are disciplined? What is your, your research environment? Uh, I, I tell you in France, for instance, a doctoral student is necessarily attached to a research unit. Uh, she is or is in a research unit with a supervisor from this research unit. So it's not in the school. It's not the, the school is simply a way uh, to have a, a, a loose link with teaching, but is mainly in the research unit. And sometimes the research unit is not in the business school, is not in the, the management department, it's outside. So there are people doing management research, for instance, in sociological uh, units in CNRS. They are not at all working uh, with uh, uh, management schools. So how is it uh, in your case? How this research is evaluated? Uh, and another thing about your classmates, who are the doctoral students uh, with whom uh, you share uh, this? Are they coming from, as we see here in this uh, seminar, from very different diverse origin everywhere, or are they uh, shaped in a single way, you know, this is interesting to know. And what is your feeling about that? Do you criticize or do you agree or do you prefer or do you, and so you have to tell a little bit more. Uh, the requirements for a doctorate, how many years uh, do you expect to, to there? So maybe tell us a little bit more. And about supervision, how your supervisor has been determined. Is it imposed by the, the school or the department or is it something in which you have uh, started a relationship with that? Uh, I am highly interested in that since I told you we have just written a book, and a, super, uh, a book on supervision and we, we are now in the process of a new book on uh, uh, assessing uh, dissertations. Uh, and, and maybe the funding, uh, what kind of uh, scholarship do you have for that? So I think that uh, we should take the, 45, the last uh, 45 minutes to make a sort of survey uh, uh, maybe uh, use these uh, um, uh, different questions, unless uh, may you have uh, some other uh, framework to propose uh, in addition to that. Thank you so much, Pierre. No, I think this is wonderful. I just wanted to highlight why this is significant. So thank you so much for your historic presentation and sharing your insights, your historical insights that you lived through your years in higher education. Now, why this is important, this is not just the history. This is this helps you as PhD students make explicit the assumptions behind the disciplines. And you see then the connections between the disciplines. And as you all know, you need to position your papers within different disciplines and most likely across disciplines. But also Pierre went even beyond that or in a higher abstract level as to the organizations, the institutions behind uh, the disciplines that help bring disciplines together or keep them apart. Those are so important because they are linked to the assumptions of the topics that you work in. And so you have this opportunity in real time and you, know, you can go back and uh, listen again to the presentation of Pierre once we place it on the YouTube, the Adamba YouTube channel and reflect on those points. I think sometimes it's very hard for everyone to capture 
all the details. Uh, we need to hear it again and again. But please feel free, you know, to raise questions uh, about, you know, links or assumptions because it is through the lived experiences and memories mm -hmm. of people like Pierre that we can track down history and understand some of the decisions that might seem logical or, as Pierre said, might be not seem logical to some of us, you know, and hence he's asking you to question them or even make explicit yourselves whether those realities within which you are basing your PhD studies make sense to you or not. Many of you have been practitioners and wearing the practitioner hat, you, you might be still able to see the difference and things might not fall into place, which is valuable <coughs> to capture this and question the academic reality. So I think th that's the only point I wanted to make just to uh, highlight yeah. the significance. Um, Pearl has a question, Pierre and me. Sorry, who? Pearl. Okay, yeah. Let's have the question. Thank you so much, Nina, first. Pearl, would you Thank like you. Me? Yes, it's me. Thank you, Pierre, for the very informative uh, background about um, the evolution of uh, um, business uh, studies. Um, I have a question. Uh, basically on uh, the, the development of, uh, of, uh, of the doctoral um, research. And also I would like to know the, any country specifically in Europe that is, was in the forefront at the developmental stages of, of um, doctoral in, in management. And also your, your view on on DBA and, and, and PhD and moving forward, the relevancy of uh, choosing uh, one, as we all know that uh, things are moving very fast and, and change is happening very dynamic and um, knowledge is, is not uh, uh, constant in terms of uh, the demands of, of the world. And uh, how how do you strike a balance in in the two academic fields? Uh, I I don't want to take uh, much time because it is, we need to, to have many people. Uh, just uh, to tell you, Pearl. First, uh, I should tell you uh, that uh, uh, I've been teaching. Uh, I've been involved in um, NLA uh, DBA program during 10 years and uh, teaching every year here on the research method. So I know well uh, your uh, institution and the, and the DBA. Uh, you know, at this point, you know, I, I wouldn't like to, 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 to make a strong difference be, between that, but it's true that uh, we are in a discipline in which uh, we, uh, I can tell you that I regret that today, for instance, most of the people that we are hiring as teachers in management in France and in some of our countries, they have never had, they have never had a practical experience within an organization. So it's highly difficult, for instance, when you teach to senior people or when you teach to older people who are involved in professional and who are uh, taking courses in ongoing, uh, ongoing education and so on, to tell them that uh, they are taught marketing or they are taught strategy by people who have never put their feet in an organization. This is a problem. So for this reason, we need to have also older people with professional experience. We have to have a balance between younger people, hardly uh, oriented toward the future and the research with new uh, uh, developments and so on. And we have to have people who bring also uh, the lessons of experience. For this reason, I think that DBA are very important. This is the only thing that I want to say at this point for DBA, because in general, in DBA, we have older people. This is uh, the, the point. Thank you, Pearl, and thank you, Pierre. Shall we start with 